there's one on a swim bait. And he's gone. Is that on Jake? Yeah. He choked it too. We found a couple, so we're gonna throw him back and keep the school fired up as I fall. It's every cast now, get in there. That's a big one. take the trolling motor and just keep us up there kind of see that blue point we want to go towards the currents kicked in it's really pushing us now coming up yeah a swim bait so that's a way to get a big bite especially when they first get out on these real deep spots in the summer oh that's a nice one a little five pounder that's just a it's a six inch Scottsboro tackle swim bait. That's an ounce VMC swim head. That's a five pound bass, full belly. Already recuperated from the spawn. Man, that's why we throw the big baits. When they first get out here, that's a great way to get a big bite. Out here recuperating and feeding back up and that's what you get. Let's let her go. I actually think it's better to have a couple guys when you're first hitting these schools early in the summer. You know, one guy can drag a bait, one guy can throw a fast moving bait, you know, guy can throw a swim bait, another guy can throw a jig. You can keep mixing your presentations up. The other thing is like we did just a minute ago, you know, when one guy gets a bite and is fighting a fish and the current's moving you and the wind's moving you, the other guy can hold you in the spot and keep the school going. If you can alternate one guy and then the other guy, you one guy, then the other guy, it's usually easier to keep them biting for a few minutes. A lot of times you'll see like when I get on schools of fish, there'll be like five or six waypoints in a place because the fish move around on a lot of places. So I graph over and figure out exactly where they're sitting on the place that I'm fishing. And then I'll put a waypoint down on it. And then one of the things I do is I extend my course heading. So it has a line coming out from the head of my cursor and I can turn and spin and face directly at that school. Cause they might only be on a hard spot, you know, six feet wide. And if I can't hit that spot every time, I could miss them by five feet and not get a bite. So, I mean, you have to be dead nuts on it every time. So later in the summer, these schools will be 50 yards long. There'll be hundreds of bass in them. First part of the summer, when they first move out on these deep places, there might only be 10 or 15 fish on a spot. And so the spot's really small. And if you can't get your lure in that little small zone every time, you just won't get a bite. God, I got the worst hook set on that. He hit it while it was falling. I got him now. Mm. <laughs> that's amazing. You throw that big swim bait like that. I mean, that's a thick six inch swim bait on an ounce head. That's a pound bass and he's got it all the way down in his mouth. I mean, <laughs> the size of that bait, but that's that's what's swimming around down there. And that's what they're feeding on. So it's nothing for them to go after it, right? I mean, you saw a one pound bass eat a swim bait like that. Now you take those glide baits that are 10 and 12 inches, those big three ounce baits. I mean, it, it stands to reason that five to 10 pound bass eat that stuff all the time. If that little one pound bass ate something this big, I mean, that's a lot bigger than a crankbait, bigger than a spinner bait. So that kind of the, throwing those big baits I, I used to think it was kind of silly but the more i've done it now the more i found that you'll still catch those two and three pound fish but you'll catch a lot more five six seven pound fish so we i mean especially on the tennessee river what everyone's looking for is corners it's essentially a point of land underwater it's like you'll have a long say a river channel bar and all of a sudden it just comes to an end and the, the current's coming this way so we're always looking for corners that face into the current. So the current hits, hits that face of this deal. They gather up on those current facing corners. So you're not just finding an edge where it breaks off into deep water. You're finding an edge of face that faces into the current. Walker, you got one? Yeah. All right. Oh gosh. Feels like it. Had a bite right there too. What's that on? Feels like it. A jig. These fish are sitting 
on a spot about the size of a car hood right now and if you don't line up perfect with them you're not going to get bit so once you find them it seems like it's every other cast. <laughs>